Poland. Oh, wow. I've always wanted to go to Poland. Welcome. Come on. Come on in. We'll take you. Yeah, we filmed season two in Prague, which is, I, I mean, closer than Georgia to you. Yeah, so. that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> New Jersey. All yeah. right. Yeah. Connecticut. I want to ask you Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Second season. So yes. it's a big thing for you. How did you cope with that people actually wanted to see this show? Because you had earlier the podcast. So we every, everybody thought that this is only a extra thing for for the viewers and they loved it they offered you the second season so how did you choose the stories for the second season um in a lot of the same ways we chose season one stories the difference being um we had a more official writer's room for season two i don't think season one had like a sit down everybody in the same room sort of moment and we were able to be a little bit more thematic about this and uh there's a lot of um connections between these six different stories that we didn't have in season one Um, and it let us be a lot more intentional about the collection as a whole. You know, if we have one of, uh, of uh, um, we have, you know, the, we have the Bloody Countess, Elizabeth Bowtree, but then we have, you know, Mary Webster, a woman accused of witchcraft, and they try to hang her. And like, th there's, a, there's a good variety there. Hinter Kaifek is a murder mystery in the woods, but um, Jack Parsons' story, um, I mean, he was the founder of JPL, you know, Jet Revolution Laboratory, and he was a rocket scientist and, a, and an occultist. Um, <laughs> And so they all have a very unique flavor, which I really love. And, and, and being the first podcast to go to TV to, to do this, there is no playbook. Yeah. So season one, we're creating, we're ideating, literally, we're we're you know convert, figuring out how to do it. Right. Season two is like, okay, this worked, that didn't, this worked, that didn't. Let's change this up. We are dialed in now and elevating. You know, now we know we, we created it, and now we're. I think perfecting it. So how does season two differentiate from season one? Like, what did you do to elevate the story? I mean, it's pretty substantial. Yeah, you know, uh, season one, you watch the main story come out. TV, we call it the A story, right? It's the main one. Um, and then throughout the episode, you'll get pulled out to learn about this or to see this in another place. Um, and those are great elements pulled from the podcast because I do that in, the, that, it's all about context in, in the podcast. It's telling the story with the tools you need to view it properly. In TV, it pulls you out of the moment. So in, in the effort to be true to the podcast, I feel like we we hampered the viewing experience just a little bit. People kept getting pulled out of the story of, of uh, Dr. Walter Freeman because we had to go learn about transorbital lobotomies and it's, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. So so here, it's so much more focused on the, the A story and those contextual moments when they happen are baked right into the A story. So you, you almost, you could, you can't miss them, but but they're they're natural, they're embedded in it organically. To, to, to tell, like, in a simple way, Aaron's podcast probably features, and I'm making this up, I'm 30 to 40 names, uh, either of characters or of things they do that are important. Like, yeah. like you know, types of science, places in the world, right? In a TV show, if you have more than five or six characters in an hour of TV, <laughs> you're like, it's crazy town, right? Yeah. You know, so we looked at season one we're very proud of it amazon loved it we got a second season we were really able to say okay here is the story here are the main characters here's who we're telling the story through aaron brought up a great point which is in the podcast and in season one aaron was the main character it was his voice his voice is what's in your head his voice and his point of view is what's delivering the story in the tv show we want the story to speak for itself we don't want an intermediate you know Aaron, as good as he is at telling stories in the visual format, you want the main character to be the guy you're scared of, you know, right. you're watching. Yeah, let him be the main character. Right? Yeah, and we do that. Yeah. I mean, some of your, some of the season two episodes are not on the podcast. Correct. Only two. So, only, yeah, but why Why did you choose to do that? And how, you know, why those two? Can I ask one question first? Can I ask you, are you going to do the two ones? Are you going to make podcasts I'm not, out of them? I'm not. Okay, okay, that's not. part of my answer on this. Um, One thing we've learned is that some podcast episodes just don't translate to video. We won't be able to do some of them. And I think that the same can be said for other ideas, that they will work perfectly well in a video format, but they really wouldn't work well. The Prog Clock episode in this new season is a great example. When you see it, you'll understand. It's full of gears and mechanisms. It's a gigantic ancient clock. And that you can't get that across in an audio podcast. So I, I feel like you have to start with a story and say, This story belongs in which format? 
Some of them can go either way. Both, right. Some of them go to audio, some of them go to video. And it, right now we're, we're, we're learning that we can do that with these story ideas. And in the writer's room, it's, it's kind of fair game. It's like, well, here's one we've never done before, but visually, this would be stunning. The Jack Parsons episode is another very visually stunning yes. episode. The, uh, the occult symbols, the rituals, things that you couldn't do in an audio show are done so well in a TV show. So it's, so it's possible that you will go both ways on the, the TV? Uh, we will, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It, because yeah. it's creatively liberating, right? right? So on the one hand, you have the podcast. We have Aaron as the ultimate resource. He's the source material, right? So when he's coming up with new ones, he's telling us this yeah. one. And now I would say we're thinking together of things. Aaron, I would say, is thinking of things. Oh, my God, I wanted to do this as a podcast, as a subject of lore. It doesn't quite work. You should check it out. I mean, this right. guy is the ultimate resource. <laughs> but now we can also look at it from a totally different way. That's right. Yeah. It increases our creative you know, ability, which is nice. Right. So there will be like two separate things, podcast and uh, TV series. It'll always yeah, be future. based on the podcast. Eve, you know, Lore is the franchise. Po the podcast is kind of the, the mothership. And that is what we pivot off. But I think for season two and beyond, we're no longer bound to just being, you know, we have our own organism, the TV show. Yeah. Yeah. And as long as tonally we're true to lore, we feel like we have carte blanche to tell yeah. different, great, awesome stories. But they still will be stories right. from the podcast and, and original. The, you know, there's a book series as well, three books. Yeah. The, the, the last one comes out this week uh, on the 9th. And they have stories from the podcast, but they also have stories that weren't in the podcast. You know, because Music. in the print world, it's, it's really easy to group a lot of these like-minded stories, same themes together, it makes sense. So every medium is gonna give us a new, flexible tool. And we're, we're playing with that. Yeah. And, all right. and he has a great new podcast, top four in the top four uh, in the iTunes world right now. That's awesome. Unobscured. Yeah, unobscured. 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 It's awesome. Salem Witch Trial. All right.